Lviv is an autologous fibroblast product. In other words, the fibroblasts, which are the cells that produce collagen in the dermis of the skin, are sent to a company and expanded multiple times, sent back to the doctor and injected into the patient for uh, aesthetic improvement. So your recent study looked at acne patients and using this to fill in their acne scars. Can you tell me about your study and the results? Sure. Um, yeah, acne scarring is a very difficult thing to treat and actually very impactful on someone's life. Uh, it can be disfiguring and you know socially uh, challenging thing to to deal with. So this study actually focused on clinical improvement of acne scarring by injecting the acne scars in a field-like pattern to try to get improvement. How does this compare to other fillers, do you think, for the treatment of acne scars? Yeah, so Levy, the way I think about it is it's not so much a, a volume occupying filler as it is basically a cell therapy. So you're taking live cells, which no other filler has, not, not, the res, not the product of a cell, but the cell itself. You're putting it in and allowing the cell to produce the collagen and what other, what other factors that it may produce. So you're actually laying the groundwork for really a long-term improvement. And how long um, is the improvement with this? The, uh, well, the, the trial, the pivotal trial for nasolabial folds was done to about six months and saw a continued improvement, sustained. Uh, you know, anecdotally, you know, uh, some of the investigators, have, and actually a subsequent patient survey showed improvement out to a year. Anecdotally, I can say, which is kind of off the bounds of the study itself, we've seen improvement at two and three years out in both acne scarring and in uh, nasolabial folds. How about uh, cost issues? Of course, this isn't covered by insurance. Um, is it an expensive treatment for patients? Yeah, even though acne scarring is disfiguring, it's caused by a medical problem. It's not a medical uh, medically uh, uh, reimbursable procedure. So uh, there can be cost issues. I mean, you've got to pay for the product for the product to be uh, harvested and uh, developed and then sent back to you at 100 fold so, and then the vials themselves. And so there, there's a up more of a upfront cost, but if you look at, I think, the longevity that we're going to see from this product, I think it'll be about the same as what you're getting from conventional fillers, which have a much, you know, different profile. In fact, you're paying for each time you do it. So is this your treatment of choice now for acne patients? Are you actually using this in your daily practice? Uh, well, it's an off-label usage, first of all. So, um, and it does take time to grow the cells. And so we're in the process now. We have several patients who are in, the, in that process where their cells are being ex uh, multiplied and they'll be sent back to us. But we offer it as an option to our patients. The traditional options, laser resurfacing, fractional resurfacing, are good, but they're, you know, they can have complications and they can result in a lot of downtime. And the future of this product? I mean, the future, I think the sky's the limit. We have to see, first of all, what we'd like to do is, I think that I think the company's going to go forward with a formal FDA trial to get a formal indication for acne scarring, which is, they're going to need to have, I think, more patients, a slightly different design, and a bigger scope. So once that's done, it would still be considered off-label until that point. So I think that's one, I know they're looking at phase two trials with burn scars um, and uh, other areas like fine lines and wrinkles around the eyes and the neck, which conventional fillers really can't help with that much because these are very superficial problems. This is where these, this can have plenty of options for in the future.